Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now, this is going to be something a bit different. Um, no reviews or, you know, tweakery or anything like that. Um, I actually spotted something in our attic the other day. I've been sort of, obviously, the usual thing, sent up to get the, the Christmas decorations. And over in the corner, I spotted something. I thought, I, didn't, I don't believe I've still got that. Um, and what it was, years ago, and I mean years ago, probably 25 plus years ago, I sort of realised I had enough bits and bobs of record players kicking about, probably to make a new record player. And rather than walking away from that idea and not doing it, um, I actually built something, something being the word, um, and it was a bit of a Frankenstein, because it was a bit of a, a bit of Roxanne, a bit of Pink Triangle, a bit of Riga, a bit of all sorts of things going on in it. Sort of design principles from here, design principles from there all botched together into one design. It was actually quite well thought through, and I'll show you it in a second. I've, got, I've actually brought it into the shop, it's here. It, it's pretty well disassembled, so I might have to, you might, might have to use your imagination as to what was going on with it. But um, I did use it for a couple of years. I actually did use it for a couple of years. It wasn't very good, I'll, I'll admit it. It wasn't very good, it sounded very ordinary. It didn't sound special at all. Considering what it was made up of, it should have been a lot better, but I think it taught me an awful lot about turntable design. Um, I thought I kind of knew stuff, but actually I think the fine details must have been a little bit at the time beyond me. So um, so yeah, let's turn the camera around and I'll show you the monstrosity itself in all its glory. <laughs> so here we are, this is the remains of my record player, power su separate power supply, um, and like a heavy bass with little outriggers on it and everything, everything isolated from everything else. If you sort of imagine the bearing would sit in there. Uh, it had a pink triangle inverted bearing. So I imagine the platter would be sort of around here, like that. Oh, God, I gotta say. Um, that tone arm, I've just rested that tone arm on just to give it a little bit more of a feel of what's going on with it, really. Um, actually, the design of it is, is sound. Um, the bass, yes, it's MDF. I mean, it, it, I suppose at the time I was sort of limited with materials. Um, it's MDF, but it's not just three bits of MDF stuck together. It's it's actually the, the central piece here is just a frame, uh, and it's actually filled with I can't remember now. Um, it was a mixture of lead shot and sand or something like that. It's 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 incredibly heavy. It sits on uh, Zobethane feet, so it's got a little bit of suspension there. Um, the motor is mounted into, onto a bit of sober thing. This wood is called, I actually had some of this in my garage, um, it's called lead wood and it's extremely dense. It's really, really heavy and very, very dense, hence the name lead wood. So I routed, routed it into a circle, well, machined it into a circle and put the, uh, mounted a pink triangle motor, which, well, pink triangle cum, lin cum, riga motor, within it. The idea being that all the vibration of this will be either absorbed by here or absorbed by the mass of the, of the actual plinth. And then there's no, the next level holds the bearing. That is isolated from where the, mo the motor is because it's actually sitting on Roxanne Xerxes suspension. Um, if you'll notice, there's a, this is mounted at three points here and at the back over there. Um, but then the arm board, is, which is this part, uh, is mounted sort of offset to that so that the mounting points aren't lined up with each other. The mounting point of the arm board is there and there and there. So any vibration from the tone arm has to go all the way down the tone arm, all the way around here, down into here, and then find its way through here. So it's it's actually quite, everything's isolated really well from everything else. Um, and the power supply, which I can't remember what's in that actually, it might, that might be pink triangle inside. I think I was going to use, um, I was going to use a Lynn Valhalla board, but um, I don't know if you've noticed there, that's solid rosewood, which I had kicking around in the garage. That's from the days when you could buy rosewood in, reasonably large chunks, um, and I think that was about as wide as you could buy. And it's two pieces of a bit about that sort of thickness. And I just routed out the inside and mounted, yeah, I think it was a pink triangle export um, power supply, which I sort of crossed my fingers a little bit because they need a lot of ventilation and there's kind of minimal, minimal ventilation in this. It wasn't really ideal, but I thought I want to use this bit of rosewood. Um, I put plastic, it's, it's Perspex, pink Perspex front panel, front and back. Um, I think the mount's got a four pin connector on the back. 
Um, and it does actually work, this. It does actually come on. It's um, got 33.45 even. still works. Whether it actually powered a turntable is a good question. It's certainly not powering this one because for some reason um, I snipped the plug off. So, yeah, I don't know quite why. It probably had a nice plug in it I needed. So, yeah, I sold the main bearing's gone, sold the bearing. Uh, platter, I probably have still, still got it somewhere. I don't know where that went. Um, Tonom, I, I sold. I think it, I can't remember where I had Tonom it was. I think it might have been a Roxanne to Briz. Tonom. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, sort of, so we've got <laughs> rolls with, with Perspex, a little knob, knob from RS, a um, big lump of dead lead wood with a motor in it. Should have sounded great, really, but it just, to me, it just sounded really flat. It didn't sort of have any get up and go. I think. I think this part of it was fairly sound. Now, whether or not it just either wasn't enough mass or it was the wrong kind of mass um, and it was still letting resonance through, I don't know. I suspect this part um, is a bit too high mass still, even though it doesn't, even though it's pared down. Uh, it probably is still too, too much mass, really. Um, or whether or not the, the Roxanne suspension wasn't really kind of filtering it out, possibly. That might have been wrong. Perhaps it needed something else. Under there, but yeah, it was, it was an interest. It was an interesting sort of thing, and really, I, I really enjoyed making making it. I was actually quite disappointed with it when I used it, but I, did, I don't think I used it for a couple of years until a, I think a, a really cheap Sondek came along, which I couldn't say no to, and bought that and replaced it, and just it just went in the loft, and then bit by bit I've sold bits off it. But um, yeah, you do these things, don't you, really? So yeah, I don't know what I'll do with it. Really, it's a bit of a, it's one of those things. It's sort of it's sitting up there. I don't know what to do with it. And I could put it all back together again, but it didn't really sound that good anyway, so why would you? I don't know. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say, really. Franken Frankenstein's turntable. Um, I, I sort of intended to, fin to finish it off better and everything. Um, I mean, MDF is not easy to finish particularly, and because it's been in the loft now, it's started to feather a fair bit now. I mean, I was, I was going to, um, what do you do, use that PVA on the, on the edges there, and then you just spray over it, but... Um, yeah, I think about, well, I just wanted to get it built. So I got it built, listened to it and thought, oh, like that. And then the, basically the whole, the whole idea of it sort of came to a halt. I didn't go any further with it, really. I'm sure people are shouting at the, the screen now saying, what, it's, it's rubbish because you used MDF. An awful lot of turntables use MDF, actually. Some really high-end stuff. Um, I think VPI do for a start. Most, a, a, lot of, a lot of the structure of VPI decks is, is MDF. Uh, project do. I mean, some of the projects, the platters are MDF. So it is. It is out there. It's a very. It's a very dense, very predictable material. So actually, it's quite good for acoustics. I mean, it's great for speakers. Uh, and in this situation, it should have been quite good. But I just, I just get the feeling it was this combination of uh, sort of mass and the, the 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 suspension and everything just didn't really quite gel together somehow. It certainly didn't sound great anyway. But anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Let's turn the camera around. So there you go. Not one of my better moments in some ways. I enjoyed doing it. I mean, that's the main thing. I enjoyed doing it, and it sort of it did teach me a lot actually about about sort of turntable design and what what's good and what's bad, and um, you know th things to look out for and things to whatever. But um, I think other people do it better than me. I think we've proved that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if I don't get manage to get another video out before Christmas, have a good Christmas and a happy New Year. Um, we're struggling a little bit to get things out to people now because the postal strike is affecting everything else, it's affecting the couriers as well, so um, next day deliveries are taking over a week at the moment, so that puts us beyond Christmas already, so yeah, um, it's been a bit of a weird year for that really, but anyway, um, like I say, have a good Christmas and a happy new year, and I'll see you in a future video, thank you very much.